What is up guys, David here. Welcome back to another life skill video. Yes, uh, I'm actually really happy to be back. Today, uh, I'm gonna be hopping into an alchemy stone guide which is gonna be updated. My first alchemy stone guide blew up. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it, I think it crossed like 30,000 views or something along those lines but it is old and I figured I would update and make a new one now that we've got new additions to live stones and all that jazz. So I just want to let you know that if you are unaware, I did drop a ninja montage. Definitely go check it out. It's very, very good. So yeah, that dropped yesterday. And yes, your life skill god is back. Uh, I'm going to be really hyped to put out some content. I have a lot of stuff to catch up on though. Like, you know, all the new Mano stuff, everything like that. So I'll be in my Discord. I'll be asking questions. I'll be answering questions. And if you have any feedback about any of the new life skills, any changes, please let me know in the comment section down below. This is your time to teach me something instead of the other way around so uh, anyways yeah let's get started so cool so if you're unaware uh, what an alchemy stone is I'm gonna go straight down to the basics an alchemy stone is essentially a item in the game that allows you to increase your success rate for processing weight limit gathering fishing drop rate um, and then also your alchemy and cooking time reduction so it's it's pretty essential when it comes to life skilling uh, what i find the best is that a sharp alchemy zone of life is probably going to be your max you don't really need anything higher than that and i'll run over that a little bit later on in the video so if you're starting out with life skills what i recommend is a a lifestone that you can actually buy off the market so if you want to find out where you actually get this stone you can pull up your marketplace and you want to go down to alchemy stone and here you'll look at life I'll run over destruction protection um, but life is going to be what you're looking for when it comes to life skilling and the main subsidiary of the life stone would be spirit stone and spirit stone you're gonna be looking for the green one here this blue life spirit stone now if we compare the alchemy and cooking time reduction it's one point one second so it's the same as my current one that's yellow it does have the same processing success rate it does not have the weight limit but it has everything else so the weight limit is only really there for if you're cooking and you want extra weight you want to hold more to cook more in batch then you can technically go for a actual quote-unquote alchemy stone instead of a life spirit stone the main difference between what I have and this blue one is that this is disposable, whereas my yellow one is indisposable, meaning that it, it always refills. So you don't have to trash it. It's just always reusable, whereas the blue one is not reusable and you have to buy another one. So as you can tell, there is a little bit of a difference, well, quite a bit of a difference in terms of price. And I would say, again, if you're brand new to life skilling, there's no need to go for what I have. You can just go for a, uh, you know, one of these spirit stones. And this spirit stone also applies to the protection stone and to the destruction stone. So if you're into PVP, you can buy these stones for well under a million silver and they will work just as well as the other equivalents of the same type of stone. So the next thing I'm going to run over is how to actually enhance these stones. What you're going to find is that if you click B or whatever your button is to open your inventory tab, you will see a tab called Alchemy. So I'm going to remove my stone here and I'll show you what I mean. If you go to the tab Alchemy, and this is again based on your Alchemy level, you can't actually enhance these without a Apprentice 1 level, you can go to the Recharge, Polishing, or Growth tab. So the Recharge tab is pretty much where if you you have a stone like I do it is rechargeable meaning that you can recharge it with any type of blood not the basic blood but any type of the crafted bloods and by those crafted bloods I mean sinner's blood I mean clown's blood legendary beast blood any of those so I will take out 50 to show you what I mean I'll put that in my inventory open this and go back to the recharge tab and you can again do this with any of the non disposable stones so you want to throw in your blood let me put in 50 of them and it will recharge it and you hit the recharge button and it's going to do its little shabazzle there and then there you go 
that is recharged. Every time that you use your alchemy stone, it will consume one durability. To use your alchemy stone, you will have to equip it and then you can hit the U button and then that's going to pop it up on your screen and you can highlight and see what kind of buffs it gives you. All right, so let's go back to the tab here and let's go to polishing. So polishing tab is a little bit more unique than the recharge tab in the sense that this is where you do all of your upgrading. Now you can take a base stone and upgrade it all the way to yellow sharp if you'd like or all the way past yellow sharp if you'd like, but I wouldn't recommend it mainly because it does take RNG to succeed and for a lot of players they get very frustrated when it comes to alchemy stones it's a very very large money sink and i'll show you a spreadsheet that i have on all my attempts and uh, you'll actually see what the outcome is for somebody like me that has been doing this for a long time i do alchemy stones for money it's very very lucrative if you get lucky or you have decent rng but this is the tab to enhance. Now, the, the main way to enhance is that for lifestones, for example, you need special fruit or you need special crops. So special wheat, special carrots, special strawberries. And special strawberries are a big highlight because those are your best bang for buck. I actually calculated the silver versus XP that you get and strawberries are pretty high up there compared to anything else in terms of silver versus XP. So for example, I will just throw in these carrots because I don't have strawberries on me right now. But what you would do is you would hit the polishing tab and it'll give you XP based on what kind of item you throw in. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't I actually need these carrots for my horse. But that is essentially the breakdown of the polishing tab. Now, when it comes to destruction stones or protection stones, both of those stones require their own products. For the destruction stones, you will need ingots. And then for the protection stone, you will need planks. And again, like I mentioned, it can get a little costly. So I would really make sure that you analyze which material gives which kind of XP. And then this way you can compare and use the right material. And last but not least, I have the growth tab here. And the growth tab is where once you're done polishing, you will throw in your stone. You will need one weapon stone and then you can attempt to enhance it. Now, there is a chance past a certain grade to actually downgrade. So right now, if I were to attempt it, it will tell me the fail penalty, which means that the XP will go down in the polishing tab and the grade may go down. There is a 40% chance from my own testing for it to drop down in grade. Again, this is just purely from my own experience and from ballpark figure testing. I've never actually seen the actual number because I don't think the chances were ever released, but 40% is what it seems to be from what I've concluded. Now, sharp alchemy stone is where you want to be. This gives 1.4 seconds in alchemy and cook time, and it gives a decent amount of other stats Anything past this stone is not worth it because it can blow up and then you're left with absolutely nothing. If you upgrade to the sharp stone, the worst possible thing that happens is it drops down in grade, which means that this sturdy stone will go down to a polished stone. Now you're probably wondering, what are all these polished, these sturdy, this sharp? So I'm going to go pull up the marketplace here and show you what I mean and we'll break down some of these, um, some of these tiers. So, in the very beginning, you're going to have an imperfect alchemy stone of life. There's yellow, there's green tier, there's blue tier, there's yellow tier. And yellow tier is the max. So what you would have next is you would have a white uh, rough stone. Okay, so one of these right here. So this would be a white rough alchemy stone of life. And then after that, it would go a white polished alchemy stone of life. And then it would go a white alchemy sturdy stone of life and then so on so forth from there it would be a white sharp yellow alchemy stone of life this one right here and then from there the next step up would be a white resplendent alchemy stone of life and then it would be a white splendid alchemy stone of life although no one has really gotten past this because the chances are just abysmally low and i would definitely not recommend going any higher than a uh, a sharp stone one of these four colors so again like i said there's white there's green there's blue and there's yellow yellow being the top so you may be wondering how you actually get a different color so when you actually throw in one of these stones for example let's say the imperfect alchemy stone of life the white version what's going to happen is 
If you pull up your alchemy tab here, when you growth it, there's going to be three slots instead of one. So you'll notice here that there's only one slot. The reason why there's only one slot is because this is the max color grade and it can only go up from here. There's no other options that it can turn into. What's going to happen is when you put in your white stone, it's going to give you three options. One of the options is going to be the next tier in white. And then the next two options are going to be a color grade of green and then if you throw in the green you'll get two other options of blue if you put in the blue stone you'll get two color options of yellow and then one color option of blue so that's the game's kind of way to give you a chance at getting a color upgrade and not necessarily getting a grade upgrade so when it comes to enhancing stones the main key factor that i tell absolutely everybody is that if you're upgrading stones you want to get a high color low grade and what i mean by that is that it's a lot easier for the game to give you a upgrade than it is for the game to give you a color upgrade with that being said i'm going to pull up my spreadsheet and i'll show you exactly how many tries i've done how much money i've made off of it and the attempts and the failures and all that jazz and i'll try to break it down so that you understand uh, maybe what you're getting into if you want to get into upgrading and selling alchemy stones it's still a decent way to make silver okay so i just want to clarify one thing that these are the prices at the time of enhancing so these are my yellow sharp alchemy stone attempts which means that these were all successes and this tab here shows the amount of strawberries that i used and these are special strawberries and this is the price that i paid for each single one of them so in total that total cost here shows on the right side so for example for num the first stone i made it took me 16,343 strawberries bought at 6,500 silver a piece and i used 87 weapon stones to actually enhance it all the way from white and perfect all the way up to the sharp yellow which came out to a total cost of 122 million seven hundred fifty nine thousand and five hundred in silver so the profit out of that was 553 million because they were selling for an average of 800 million at the time so if you want to see the breakdown essentially it was quantity of strawberries multiplied by the price of the fruit and then i added the stones multiplied by the average stone cost and that came out to how much i figured out the total cost would be for the profit per craft it's a very easy equation i was essentially just deducting the total cost from the after tax and the way that i found the after tax was the before tax price market value multiplied by 0.845 and that is your uh, value pack tax if you do not have a value pack then you will be at a significantly larger loss but this would be calculated with a value pack. So all in all, that first stone gave me 553 million uh, profit and it was great, which essentially I could turn around and say I could make another three more stones, right? For that cost, technically, if I got the same RNG. So moving down the line here, essentially I did that for everything. And then at the end, I calculated how much I made total and the total amount of silver that I made in profits was 6.7 billion silver and that was in i want to say around two weeks and i remember streaming a couple of these because i did make four stones in one night so that night i made about a two billion silver profit and that was from stones alone it was really fun i absolutely love making stones for a lot of players they tell me that it's tedious it's boring and they hate it and they just want to end their life because they just have the worst rng but for me i've been having a lot of luck so anyways uh yeah so the return on investment is pretty much what's or how much I was getting back in terms of how much I spent. So again, you know, I didn't calculate the cost of how much it actually took to make like time-wise. And if I wanted to calculate it in time, then maybe the return on investment would be a little bit lower. But if I was not calculating time, uh, which is probably not the best idea, which, and you should, um, I didn't. But if I wasn't calculating time, this is my return on investment. Here, it seemed I only spent about 39 million and I got 636 million silver back. So I got a 1600% return, which was absolutely insane. Anyways, so here, the amount per average full and then the amount per average half. So what I mean by here is how many strawberries I actually put in 
for how much XP I want. So let's say I want to put in a fill stone at 80%, and I recommend filling your stones to 80%. Don't max out your stone to 150, because I found that through my testing, there's no reason to go past 80%. There's diminishing returns in terms of the chance that you get to succeed. So I would say 80% is your cap, and to fill an imperfect stone to 80%, you need 100 strawberries. To fill it to 50%, or sorry, to fill it to 40%, you need 50 strawberries. In the rough category, you need 220, polished need 400, and sturdy you need 880. So I actually did play around with some of the other products, and special hump mushrooms seem to be the closest in terms of XP for silver spent at the time due to the marketplace prices. For I think special strawberries are still the best as of current. Remember, I just came back to the game today, so I'm not exactly sure, but I've never really had strawberries fluctuate in terms of silver for price. Special strawberries give 6600 XP and then special hump mushrooms give 5400. So there is about a thousand XP difference there. Okay, so moving on here, I did make two yellow sharp destruction stones and I did make three yellow sharp protection stones. And this is again ingots as I mentioned earlier and plywood as I mentioned earlier. I may have said planks, um, but it would be plywood. I do correct myself and I do apologize. For the ingots tab, I used 10,000. I priced them at 9,000. So I spent about, on average, about 100 million silver, maybe let's say 120 million silver. The breakdown for these stones though, they were significantly more market value than the life stones. They were at 905 million at the time. So I made a very high return on investment here. The profit per craft seemed to be about 625. So total, I made 1.2 billion silver off of that. And in terms of material price, I found that lead ingot gave the most at 21,000 XP. Comparatively, you could buy iron ingots and those give about 20,000 XP. So uh, last but not least, I have the yellow sharp protection. I made three of these and uh, I was buying plywood at about 13,000 each. There is a certain price that I don't go over and that's just because I wanna make sure that I'm making profit. Yes, I know that I'm making profit because um, you know they are valued very high comparatively, but I still wanna make sure that I'm not buying plywood for let's say 30,000, right? Because that eventually adds up. So actually, it seems that I didn't fill this out. So what I'll do is I'll fill this out with you here. So I'm going to take the quantity of plywood, multiply that by the price, add the stones used, which was 200, and then multiply that by the average stone cost. And that came out to 117 million silver. I'm gonna turn that into a number here so that I can see what I'm doing and then subtract the decimal point. And then to find out my profit per craft, I'll take the after tax and I will subtract the total cost. So there we go, I made about 588 million that time. To find my return on investment, I'm going to put in the equal sign. I'll take the profit per craft and I will divide it by the total cost and that will give me a solid 502% in return on investment. And then what I found for XP was that Elder Tree Plywood gave the most and Moss Plywood came in at a very, very close tie at 27,778. Okay, so with all that out of the way, now you know how much money I've actually made. I haven't done stones in a little bit, but I would still say that Alchemy Stones has been a very solid money maker for me uh, ever since I've been playing Black Desert Online, ever since I got into Alchemy Stones and looked into it and I've done my own spreadsheeting. I, I still stand by it and I still say it's a really good method. It's only a good method if you have good RNG, but if you have that bad of RNG, I mean, you should just stop playing Black Desert in general, right? <laughs> so uh, no, but for real, I would say try it. it. You know, it may work out for you. It may not. I'm sure you're wondering if there's any, you know, any kind of uh, tin foil pertaining to alchemy stone upgrading. And I did test out a little bit when I was Alchemy Level Master 11, uh, enhancing on the same character, it seems that the more you fail on a certain grade, the better chance you have at going the next color tier. And then my second hypothesis was that each stone has its max level that it will upgrade to. Now this hypothesis, the second one here, I didn't, I don't have like the best basis for it, uh, but I did find that there is certain stones that just always go up and there's certain stones that are just cursed and they just never go up. But the first hypothesis here is that if you keep failing, I think that out of every time that I failed, it seemed about every 30 times I failed, I always had one success. So if you take a look here, out of all my successes, out of all the stones I did, 
I had 31,746 fails and I got 2,045 successes. You'll notice here in the spreadsheet that a lot of my attempts on yellow have been pretty much fails. You'll notice here that yellow white has been 1,600 attempts and I only got 13 successes and most of the time they just upgraded to the next tier over. For polish attempts, you'll notice that I did 4,100 fails and I only got 139 successes. And for sturdy attempts, I had 6,800 uh, fails and only 180 successes. And then, I mean, it got a little bit better at sharp because there was no way that it was gonna downgrade. All in all, just remember, you wanna go color over grade. And if you can get the max color, which is yellow, then you can push grade. You know, if you if you get a high grade, but you don't get a high color, I would just probably trash it and restart because you're gonna pour in more resources to get it to the correct grade, or sorry, the correct color than you are to get it to the correct grade. It's just a lot easier to get a grade than a color. Uh, the chances for success on the life stones are 6%. The chances of success on the destruction and the protection are 3%. For failure chances on the life stone, you do have a 94% chance to fail. You have a 40% chance to downgrade. And then on the destruction and the protection stone, you have a 97% chance to fail. And you do, of course, have the same from what I've tested of 40% chance to downgrade. And that is only starting at sturdy to sharp. So anywhere is before that, there's no chance to downgrade, but past sturdy going into sharp, you will have a chance to downgrade. Sharp and higher going to resplendent, for example, will have a chance to blow up and disappear. If you did enjoy the guide, feel free to leave a like. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of it. If you have any further questions, my Discord is linked in the description down below. And uh, feel free to hit me up and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's all I have for you.